Okay, so this is the first year business studies test on the topic of income and expenditure. So I'm going to go through each of the questions on the test one by one and what you should have said to get the full um, 10 marks for each answer, apart obviously from the last question which was worth uh, 20 marks in total. So the first question asks us what the difference is between income and expenditure. So when we're doing this question, we must come up with our definitions for income and our definitions of, for expenditure. But we also must not forget to give an example as well. So our definition for income is when money comes in to a household. So an example there could be something like wages. Okay, and expenditure then is when money goes out of a household. And there's so many examples there, like paying a bill, for example. So, in this question, we've given a definition of income, which is money that comes in, for example, a wage, and you could have also said things like salaries or child benefit. And we've also given an example for expenditure with its definition, which is money that goes out, which is paying a bill. You could say rent, paying a mortgage, there's so many examples that you can give. Okay, so now moving on to question two. What are the three types of income that we have studied? Well, the three types of income that we have studied, well, the first one is regular income. And this basically is income you receive all the time. Okay, so it's all the time that you receive it. And that could be, again, something like a wage or a salary. You can count on it. You know it's coming. Okay? Uh, the second type is an irregular income. So it doesn't happen all the time. So that could be like a lottery win. You cannot depend on it. Okay? Um, so regular happens all the time, like a wage. Irregular, you can't count them. It doesn't happen all the time, like a lottery win. And the last one is a perk. And a perk, it's not money. So any source of income you receive that isn't money, like a car parking space. You could also say something like... Oops, I'll just uh, try to fix that there. Uh, you could also say something like a company phone, a uh, company car, basically anything you receive that isn't money as a source of income. So again, the three types of income we have studied, regular, which you receive all the time, like a wage or a salary, irregular, like a lottery win, you receive maybe on a once-off occasion, and lastly, a perk, which is not money, a non-money source of income, which is like a car parking space. Okay, so now, question number three. What are the three types of expenditure that we have studied and give an example for each? Well, the first one is fixed. And this means that the expenditure stays the same. So the amount will stay the same. Something like rent, for example. So it's a fixed amount that we pay out each month. Mm. The second one is irregular. This means the amount changes. Oops, fix that there. Let's fix my X there. And this could be something like a bill because they depend on usage. You might use the heat in your house maybe more at, at Christmas time because it's cold uh, than you would during the summer when it's nice and warm outside. So it really depends on the amount of, that you use the item or product or service, um, which will determine how much you have to pay for it. So that's an irregular amount. And the last one is discretionary. It's a big long word. And that is your luxury goods. Like a holiday. Uh, 
Um, so things after you've made your fixed and regular payments, when you've got the money left over, things that are luxury for you that you may or may not want to buy. So like our fixed and our regular really cover our needs and our discretionary then cover our wants. So if you wanted to get the new FIFA game or you wanted to go to Topshop and buy a brand new dress or something like that, uh, discretionary expenditure falls into that category. So remember, our three types of expenditure we have studied. The first one is fixed, which is, means it stays the same, like rent, so a payment that will stay the same. Uh, the next one is a regular, and the amount will change, like a bill. And the last one will be discretionary, which for luxury goods like a holiday. Okay, moving on to the next question. So, in this question, we are asked to complete the following questions based on the table below. And this is for the Byrne family. So the first question asks us to list the three types of regular income. So you would write in the space there the three types of regular income. Well, let's look. The first one that's regular is Paul's salary. Because look, it's 950. 950. It comes every month. Look, 1, 200 and 950. The second will be Margaret's salary. 800, 800, 800, 800. And the last one will be child benefit. Because look, we receive it every single month. So we have Paul's Salary, Margaret, salary, and lastly we have the child benefit. Now, um, obviously when you're listening guys, I'm trying to use uh, my thumb here to write so it's not as easy, but you make sure you put this neatly together. But I'm really just going through this for no format for you so to help you study and when you're going back over the tests and the questions. Okay, so question number two then asks us to list the example of an irregular income. Well, what income up there doesn't happen all the time, doesn't happen on a regular basis, well that would be the lottery win there. So we just simply put in our lottery win and that go that's going back to our um, definition from question two, so our lottery win there. Now, next question asks us, how much is the total income for the uh, four months? Well, we go to our total column, and we see here's our total for Paul's salary, here's our total for Margaret's salary, here's our total for child benefit, and the total for lottery just got cut out there, but that should be a thousand there as well. It is on your test written as a thousand. So you add those four totals up, or it was done for you in this question, will give you a final figure of 8,370. So our total for the four months is the 8,370 that was given to you in the question. And the last part of the question asks you to give one reason why Paul's income could have rose in September. So let's drag this up slightly. Now, um, one reason Paul's income could have rose in September could be something like overtime. Maybe he worked extra hours in September. Or perhaps maybe he received a bonus. Maybe he did a really hard um, task or his, his boss was really happy with, his, with his, the work that he'd done or something along them kind of lines. So he said, do you know what, Paul? Great work in September. We'll give you an extra source of income, an extra bonus, in other words. So perhaps he earned overtime or maybe he hit a target and he received a bonus or even maybe commission either. Now, the next question asks you to pick any five of the following terms, um, commission, bonus, false economies, impulse buying, opportunity cost, capital expenditure, and current expenditure. So we'll just have a look at that now. Okay, so what I'll do here is, because there's a huge list of them, I'm simply just going to talk you through them, and then you can stop and pause and uh, go back over them. I'll just put maybe one or two little things uh, on the, the iPad here to help you when I'm talking about each of them. And the first one we'll talk about is commission. So, um, commission is... first one is commission. So when I'm talking about commission... So, if you make a sale in a shop, so say you're working in a Foot Locker or um, a shop like that, and you make a sale, you sell something to someone, and you, that box of shoes goes up to the till, and you, the shoes are sold, whatever, you may get a percentage of that sale for doing a good job. So commission, in other words, is basically like earning money off a sale, okay? So if you make a sale, you can earn money off that, and we call that commission. The second one is a bonus. 
Let's write this in here. Now, when you're answering this, make sure you've stated it. So commission is, or bonus is. You've explained it. So in other words, you've given an explanation. Um, so just for commission above, I've said it's like earning an extra sale, or earning, sorry, earning money off a sale. And then you also give an example. That is key. It shows the examiner you know what you're talking about. So when we're talking about bonus here, that we're stating what a bonus is now. A bonus is. So bonus is for when you work very, very hard in the job. Okay, so you work really, really hard in a job and you maybe hit a target, you'll get rewarded for your hard work. And we call that a bonus. And usually, guys, that is extra income. So that's what a bonus is. So for working hard in a job, you will receive an extra income. The next one is false economies. And this is when something will appear cheaper now but in the long run, it will actually turn out to be more expensive. So say you see a, a bag for €5, euro, and you see another bag for €10, euro, and you say, Do you know what, I'm going to get the bag for €5, euro, but it's of poorer quality, and that bag breaks, and then you have to go and replace that bag with maybe another €5 euro bag, and that one breaks, and then maybe you have to go and replace another one again, and that one breaks. Maybe you would have been just better off, well, in this instance, you would have been better off just buying the sturdier, more expensive €10 euro bag rather than the cheaper €5 euro bag, and we call that a false economy. In other words... When something appears cheaper now, but in the long run, it actually turns out to be more expensive. Now, the next one is impulse buying. And we are all guilty of this. And this is when you buy something on the spur of the moment, unplanned spending. So as you walk into the shop, you might go in for maybe uh, bread or milk, and you end up coming out with two bars of chocolate and a packet of popcorn or something. In other words, you go into a shop and you buy things you didn't plan to buy. It's unplanned spending. So when you're talking about impulse buying, make sure you give this definition and its example. Now, the next one on the list is opportunity cost. Let's write this in. An opportunity cost is when you have two items in front of you and you choose one item over another. The, you basically lose all, out in the opportunity to have one of those items. So, for example, you have a euro in your pocket and you want to buy a bar of chocolate. You can either buy a Mars or you can buy a Twix. You choose to buy the Mars. Your opportunity cost is the Twix. In other words, you've lost out on the opportunity of having that Twix. The next one is capital expenditure. Capital expenditure. And this is spending on long-term things. Things that will last a long time. Like a car, like a house, uh, for the government, like schools. Things that are going to be around a long time. That's what capital expenditure is. I think capital is like a big city. Capital, big. So spending on long-term items that are going to be around a long time. And the last one then, on this particular list, is current expenditure. And that is the op opposite of capital. And what current expenditure is, is spending on day-to-day -day things. I always say, think when you're talking about social media, Twitter, what's currently trending, what's currently in the news, what's in the now. It's day-to-day -day spending. So things like food, things like magazines in the shop, things that will last a short time, in other words, is what we call current expenditure. So guys, when you're revising these important definitions from this last question, uh, make sure you go back over them in the notes, and remember, you must state, explain an example across all the tests as well. So there you have it. There is the solutions to the first year class test on income and expenditure. Thank you.